There are so many new COVID-19 patients in France every day that some hospitals are running out of space and the military has been called in to help get those most in need of medical attention to less crowded healthcare facilities. The government says without an urgent response, the crisis may soon become unmanageable. We will have to manage a higher peak of hospitalizations in November than in April. And because the virus is accelerating, we need to accelerate too. The situation is changing and we are adapting to the new circumstances created by the sudden acceleration. It's shutting down all bars, restaurants and other non-essential businesses for four weeks. People have been ordered to stay home from Friday until at least December and they will need to obtain permission from local authorities to travel. That's worrying businesses and wage earners who are already struggling to survive. It's a bit of a pity. It's going to be hard for all shopkeepers. It's going to be very difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm a student here in Paris, so it's going to be difficult for me to, to make money. So. Frustration is also rising among German workers after Berlin announced a two-week partial lockdown and empowered local authorities to impose curfews. It can't be that we wind down the economy again. So many people are suffering. Gastronomy, the travel industry. I work in consultancy and see it all. It isn't manageable. While the pandemic rages on across European and other countries, Taiwan has not reported a single case of the virus in 200 days. Epidemiologists say timely lockdowns and comprehensive contact tracing helped it achieve this feat. And they're urging a similar response from European leaders before life there can return to normal. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Andrea Render joins us now from Brussels. He is Head of Global Governance, Regulation, Innovation and the Digital Economy at CEPS, which is an independent think tank focusing on Europe. Welcome to the program, Andrea. Now, for most of the summer, it did appear that Europe w was really handling the coronavirus uh, situation better than in the US. But the European Centre for Disease Control now says we're seeing more new cases per capita in Europe than the US average. So what went wrong in Europe, particularly in France and Germany? Well, nothing specifically went wrong, meaning that uh, um, it was probably just an illusion, meaning that the effect of the first lockdown has eased a little bit the, the impact of the of the uh, coronavirus on the economy. Uh, a little bit maybe the, the higher temperatures have uh, uh, slowed down the diffusion of the virus. But I mean, countries have taken uh, the lockdown uh, with differences, obviously, but quite, quite seriously across Europe, uh, north, uh, south, east, west. There have been lockdowns that have been uh, really almost complete lockdowns. Uh, obviously, during the summer, uh, most uh, of these restrictions have been relaxed, and uh, there are a number of reasons for this, including obviously the the pressure on the economy to resume activities, and uh, and uh, both on the supply and the demand side. But that said, the effect of this summer and the and the and the fact that people have uh, started to relax gradually, what was a level of attention uh, that has been uh, remained high for several months, has determined the second wave, and the second wave is something. Where And this is where, I mean, some of the problems begin, because uh, nothing specifically went wrong, but the only thing that really went wrong is that we have had weeks to prepare for the second wave, but we got distracted, and um, almost no country is actually prepared for the second wave, including capacity in hospitals, including the availability, availability of um, protective equipment, including the availability of personnel and skills. Uh, most of these things that could have been um, uh, sort of uh, uh, done during the uh, non-lockdown period, we're not done. And mm. now we're back at square one or well, even worse. Yes, I mean, that leads me to my next question because I, I wanted to ask you whether in the months, where, the summer months where these restrictions were lifted, uh, did countries like France and Germany really prepare for the eventuality of, of even more cases? Did hospitals build more capacities? Are they better equipped to treat patients with COVID-19? You're, you're saying they really didn't take advantage of that. That's my impression. Um, there's no significant increase in the capacity in hospitals, no significant uh, increase in the infrastructure. And this is what worries me very much, because we have uh, demonstrated that we are not ready to learn the lesson. 
the lesson of resilience, as it's normally called. Uh, you, you have to remember that uh, most of the uh, problems that have emerged in many of the Western countries depend on the fact that over time, focus and emphasis on efficiency as opposed to uh, having a, a, a sufficient redundancy in the uh, uh, healthcare infrastructure had led really to cut costs to the bone in, in many of these countries, and thereby when uh, more capacity was needed, it was not available. Now, we've had that lesson the first time, and now we have the second wave, and we haven't, and it's quite clear that we haven't learned the lesson again. So uh, whatever happens in the coming months, well, we really need to rethink the way in which we uh, approach these large-scale okay. risks. But we do know more about the coronavirus now, don't we, that it affects the elderly more, that if it affects people with comorbidities more. So in that sense, do you think governments should be taking a more nuanced approach instead of shutting down the whole of the economy? Should they be shielding those who are vulnerable to the disease? Well, listen, there are many things that we still don't know about the virus. One good example is uh, children. Um, there's a, a very split public debate with respect to whether children uh, are more likely to become infected or less likely to become infected or contagious. There are many things that circulate. It's very complicated to get a hold of uh, uh, the, the right information. So while we know a few more things and we know uh, probably better how to treat people, uh, it is not at all clear that we know enough to be able to be surgical in the way in which we uh, implement the restrictions. And the other thing is the behavioral aspects, meaning most people only understand black or, or white. Uh, so either you go into lockdown and try to enforce it, but just uh, uh, relying on measures that are uh, a, a little more nuanced is unlikely to be as effective. OK, well, let's see what happens in the coming weeks and months in Europe. Andrea Renda in Brussels, thank you again for joining us on the programme. Thanks a lot.